with time are embracing um, a healthy lifestyle in Uganda. And that's all right. But now you're in the city and then you think, how can I get my vegetables? The market is too expensive. The supermarket, Lord help me. Well, in today's episode, you get to know some technologies that could help you in the urban area to grow your vegetables and spices. This is a hanging garden. It has very many lettuces, both red and green. Mm. We have just planted them in plastic bottles. We mix the soil with manure and plant your vegetables. This is to maximize space. Even if you're a tenant, you can set up such a garden and put it at the side of your balcony. So with me, I have Godfrey Kato, an agriculture officer here at the Chanja Agricultural Resource Center, KCCA. And uh, we are in the greenhouse uh, for the vegetables. We're going to learn a little bit more um, about um, the benefits of these vegetables. Yeah, so Kato, it's nice to have you here. So take us through this. What, what do we have here? What's going on? Okay, you're welcome. Uh, this is Chanja Agricultural Resource Center. And here we are in a greenhouse yeah. for propagating seedlings, yeah. for vegetables. But we don't only do vegetables, we do different crops like uh, uh, herbs and spices, mm. uh, vegetable, superior varieties of vegetables. Mm. And also we do fruits uh, like purples, uh, guavas, sour soup, yes. different uh, crops. Yes. And those those are horticultural crops. Mm. So we are in a greenhouse of 8 by 30 meters. And it has different varieties of vegetables. Mm. For example, we have uh, spinach, we have broccoli, we have kale, we have cauliflower, mm. we, have, we do sweet peppers. We do different uh, horticultural crops. And in this greenhouse, we raise seedlings for a period of uh, three weeks mm. to one month. And then we sell it to farmers. We are in a propagation unit where we raise seedlings. And as you see, we are using trays. Yeah. These are seedling trays, and the seedlings are raised off the ground. Yeah. Why we do that? We don't want contamination. We want to produce heresy seedlings, which are distributed to farmers, sold to farmers, mm. and also given to NADS beneficiaries. And uh, we use a medium called pit moss. Yes. It is a growing medium we use for raising seedlings. Uh, we, we, that medium is disease free. Yes. But is from plants. Uh, as you hear the word moss. <laughs> yes. There is that plant we call moss. Yes. It is an unflowering plant. Uh, it is, they, they, we use that different, some of those plants to make pit moss. And after making pit moss, we put it, we, we soak it, we mix in some little water mm. and we put in a tray, a seeding tray. When we put in a seedling tray, then we start sowing the seed. We put one seed per hole, and then we cover with pit moss. Mm. And then we start watering. And you make sure don't give a lot of water. Because when you give a lot of water, the seedling will rot mm. from down. And you will say, hey, maybe the, uh, the seeds are not, uh, the, they, they, I bought fake seeds. Mm. Some farmers come, the farmer, some farmers prefer buying greater seedlings because they don't want to go in the process of raising the nursery. Mm. It's a bit hectic. And uh, someone will come and buy red seedlings, very healthy, yeah. disease-free, and you take it in your, in your garden, in the open field, yeah. and you plant. Here where we are standing <coughs> is where, we start, where they start from. This is where the seedlings start from. Mm. And this net here, the black net, mm. reduces on the heat. That's why when you stand here, you don't feel a lot of heat like the other side. Yeah. So from here, when they grow up, before, we we, before they come to buy them, we put them the other side mm. where, we do, we, where we do hardening off. That process, we call it hardening off. We expose the seedlings to harsh conditions mm. before they are taken outside for open field farming. We raise around 50,000 seedlings in this greenhouse. Amazing. And 50,000 seedlings, we sell a seedling at 300 shillings. So you find that 300 shillings times the 50,000 seedlings, that is 15 million. 15 million shillings. And uh, they take a period of one month to be sold off. So you, you have an income of 15 million yes. in a period of one month. One month. 
Then after every month, after every one month, you plant you again. You do it again. You plant again. You plant <laughs> again. These crops, the horticultural crops, most of the horticultural crops, they take a short period, maturity period. Yeah. And you find that, let's say, if a farmer wants to grow vegetables, which takes a period of two months, uh, others they take three months, mm. you you'll have uh, uh, money in a short period of time. You'll get a sh income in a short period of time because vegetables take a short period of time. Mm. So we train them how to grow vegetables in, ba in the backyard. And most of our farmers in the city, they have adopted mm. how to grow vegetables in small spaces. And uh, they sell yeah. to supermarkets, like people growing sweet peppers. They are supplying supermarkets mm. as they are doing export. Then also, we are training farmers to grow vegetables and sell to Naka Cero market. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's a high demand for vegetables in mm. Kampala. The population is so high. And uh, we are training them how to grow short high value crops mm. and sell in a short period of time so that you can have income in a short period of time. Yeah. We are going to show you the different technologies, urban farming technologies, mostly the backyard gardening, which, uh, which we tra we, we, they, they, they go outside and make for some people mm. in the city. And we know very well people in Kampala, they don't have big spaces, big spaces yeah. but we try to come up with technologies, urban farming technologies, which are suitable yeah. for urban areas. People can grow vegetables at the balcony, can grow vegetables, herbs and spices mm. on flats, even flowers. Flowers is also a horticultural crop, yeah. it is a horticultural crop. And some, uh, they, 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 they plant flowers, they plant spi herbs and spices, they plant vegetables. And uh, we are trying to, to do that for our people in the city. Mm. Yeah. We are trying to minimize the usage of chemicals and uh, we are trying to train farmers how to do vegetables and crops or in an organic, organic way. Ways. Yes. Someone can set up actually a greenhouse. It's one of the technologies we are training farmers to do hmm. in small spaces. You find that someone who is in Kampala and has a plot of uh, 50 by 100, he can actually set up a greenhouse. Yeah. And uh, a greenhouse is a project someone can set up and grow crops horticultural uh, crops, high value crops. For example, sweet peppers, English cucumber, cherry tomatoes, uh, broccoli, uh, strawberries, yeah. all those crops, someone can grow them in a greenhouse and you find that they take a very short period of time. Yeah. Three months, you're ready in the market <laughs> to sell and earn income. Yeah. So are there any challenges when it comes to this um, unique style of... Okay. I would say uh, one of the challenges of uh, greenhouse farming, mm. it, it is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it is expensive and uh, what we have done, we have trained, you now this is a solution. Yes. <laughs> we have trained our, uh, one of some of our people mm. at the center how to do fabricated greenhouses. Ah, yes. This one would cost around 10 million, but the fabricated one mm. would cost around 7 million. Mm. So we have come up with a fabricated greenhouse mm. and we have technicians we trained here yes. who are fabricating greenhouses for our farmers. Maybe the third sign would be that maybe the crops can be exposed to harsh conditions mm. and pests but now the, the, the plants are in a protective structure. Mm. This is the inner structure. Why do we do greenhouse farming? We want, the, we want our crops not to be exposed yes. to pests not be exposed to harsh conditions like extreme heat, not to be exposed to floods. Yes. Let's say, for example, if these seedlings were in the open, mm. you find that if, let's say, flood comes, flood comes, mm. that means all of them will get destroyed. destroyed. And that means that would be a big loss. Yes. Over 15 million gone. So we're going to take a look around and see firsthand what the vegetables are like when they're outside the greenhouse, shall we? We'll go for a very short commercial break and when we return, we get to know more from the experts. Here we are, we have a demonstration mm. for sack gardening. 
this is backyard, backyard gardens. Yeah. And it is called Asaka Garden for vegetable production. Mm. Uh, we have different crops here for vegetables. We have spinach, we have skumawiki, we have kale, we have tomatoes yes. in this space. And uh, in this space, we have uh, 30 sacks. Okay. Saka gardens. Mm. There are 30 of them. Mm. And uh, each sack is containing 40 plants mm. per sack. So you find that in this space, we have uh, 30 sacks, mm. and each is containing 35 plants. And uh, you'll find that all of, all, all of these gardens, mm. they have a number of 1,200 plants mm. in this space. Mm. So this is just to demonstrate to urban farmers yeah. that you can actually have five sacks in your compound and you can have a lot of vegetables. Mm. You can see all that plant population yeah. on just one sack. You have 40 plants there and you find that if each person has a sack garden in his or her compound, you have a lot of vegetables at home mm. for consumption and also to improve nutrition at home and to improve income. Yeah and uh, also tomatoes on the same. So in this demonstration of uh, sack gardens, we have two types of irrigation system. Mm. We have the pitcher. This is the pitcher. The pitcher is a technology we have come up to help farmers to improve on the irrigation yes. in the sack gardens. And the pitcher is made out of clay. Mm. And this is where you pour water. And it has very tiny powers, yeah. which you can't see the only ed the only ed eyes. eyes. So water moves, uh, just moves out, out. Sorry, seep out, sorry, and the, the plants will grow towards the center, mm. looking for nutrients and water mm. at the same time. This is a drip irrigation system. Mm. So the drip irrigation system has uh, the eyes, these are the eyes, these are the, 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 eyes, the holes. Mm. And uh, when you open water at the tank, that mm. is the feeding tank, yeah. water will drip and seep down into the sack. Mm. So you'll find that your garden will have a lot of water. We will get water. The plants will access water and they will perform well. Here we have spices in the, in the buckets mm. and we down sell. Yeah. We sell each bucket, for example, rosemary, lemon balm. Mm. One bucket, is, it is at 20,000 shillings, mm. a bucket with a plant. Mm. It is ready for use. From here, you just take it and, and start. start using. So it is at a cost of 20,000 shillings. And taking care of it is manageable. It is manageable. It mm -hmm. is very easy. You just remain to give it water, yeah. to just add some manure, yes. organic manure if you have it at home, and you boost its growth. Its growth, yes. yes. You okay. just pluck off leaves as you use. And, and it, it keeps keep on growing. It grow. okay. Then here, we have uh, this kind of uh, farming. This is actually, which can be done even at the side of your house. Yes. This is the ha vertical gardening. And we have uh, different herbs and spices. Mm, yes. This is the serrare. Yes. This is parsley. Mm -hmm. This is basil. This is lemon verbena. Yeah. This is the cayenne. It, 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 uh, it is in the capstone family. Yeah. And then we have oregano. Yeah. We have the antimesia. Antimesia is a uh, is a repair a, 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 a mosquito, mosquito repellent. repellent. Yes. But it's also a uh, refreshener. You can use it in your house. You can just put this in your house and it is really good it gives very good flavor yeah but also is a mosquito repellent then the oregano is very good it's a spice it has uh, very many benefits mm. it is uh, good for the heart it relieves body pain if you're feeling body pain yeah you can use you can use oregano you don't need to to buy panando yeah. <laughs> you can use oregano and spice your tea yeah. your juice and it is very good then we have uh, stevia this is stevia mm. natural sugar uh, you don't need to to use the sugar. <laughs> you just need to get a few leaves of the stevia, mm. put in your cup, and uh, you can use it. So you find that some people can plant uh, stevia at their places, at mm. their homes, and you really cut the cost of buying sugar at home. Yeah. This is a, a backyard garden, and it is called the Keyhole Garden. It has very nice, beautiful stones on the side, mm. and this is a retaining wall. We call it a retaining wall. And then we get very good soil mixed with manure. We put it the other side. Uh, this garden looks beautiful in the compound. And someone can set up a keyhole garden and have a variety of uh, different plants. Mm. If you look at this garden, it has very many plants here. It has the rosemary, it has the celery, 
it has lavender, it has lettuce, it has eggplant, it has basil, it has purple cabbage yeah. in the same garden. So someone can have such a small garden in his or her compound and grow All different these. crops which are necessary, which we need at home. <laughs> yeah. This is the hanging garden. It has very many lettuces, both red and the green. Mm. We have just planted them in plastic bottles. We mix the soil with manure and plant your vegetables in a vertical way of growing vegetables. This is to maximize space. If you don't have a big space, even if you're a tenant, you can set up such a garden and put it at the side of your balcony and grow the different vegetables in the, in the, in the bottles. Mm. You can grow lettuces, you can grow celery, you can grow parsley, you can grow spring onions in just containers. And this is a very good garden which can fit in a very small space. And also it is a garden for children. <laughs> yeah, for children at school mm. they, and at home. It is the, they, they like such uh, uh, gardens. Then here we have this plot. This is just to demonstrate to people mm. in urban areas that someone may have a plot and he, he has not started, he is not going to construct at that time. Yeah. Uh, we, we show people that before you wait to construct, you can actually do something. You yeah. can grow vegetables um, on raised beds. We, you find that we have mulched using this mulching plastic. Mm. The mulching plastic helps to reduce under weed pressure mm. and also retain its moisture in the soil. It helps to retain moisture in the soil. So we show people, to we demonstrate to people that you can use your plot and grow vegetables which take a short time and generate income mm. before you it, actually you can get money which can help you to start yeah. a house when you're just growing vegetables yeah. and sell to markets of in Kampala. And around here we have this we have different designs yeah. of uh, gardens. We have the wooden boxes here. Mm. The wooden boxes are also for vegetable production, herbs mm. and spice production. And we're just demonstrating to uh, farmers that you can actually set up box gardens, wooden box gardens, and plant different uh, vegetables. Mm. Uh, some, some, some people plant trees in big wooden boxes mm. in their compound, but we are demonstrating to show that you can actually use the small spaces you have and set up box gardens, mm. grow different vegetables, tomatoes, uh, broccoli, carrots, spinach in a box garden. Mm. So this is just a small garden you can set up even at the side of your balcony. Here, you, you see how we are using the fence mm -hmm. to grow lettuces in very small containers. Uh, mm -hmm. Lettuces can perform yeah. in, because they have shallow roots. They can perform in, 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 in containers, small containers. So you can hang uh, vegetables in small containers and grow vegetables on the side of your perimeter fence mm -hmm. or the, the, the chain link. We have uh, a food tower. Mm. This uh, food tower is a backyard garden which can fit in a small space mm -hmm. and uh, it is in a space of 10 feet the width th that, 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 that space this space it is it can fit in a space of 10 feet so the food tower has a population of over 200 plants ah. these are the plants we have here it is designed for people with limited space you can set up a food tower and grow vegetables mm. all year round uh, it has a column of stones mm. in the middle yeah. for saturating water in the garden. Mm. Then it is designed in steps. We have that step with the spinach and tomatoes. Then we have another step with the broccoli on top and spinach and skumawiki on the sides. Then we have this. These are curbs, concrete gardens. Mm. Mixed soil are placed in the concrete gardens where you can grow vegetables, you can grow spices, and they are long lasting. Yeah. But also, they are for demarcating your compound. You can use the concrete gardens to demarcate your compound, to make it beautiful, it is, it, it is long lasting, and easy for food production yeah. at home, just in your compound. When we talk about urban farming, mm. we are training also, we have started to, 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 to train students in schools. Yes. Primary school right from nursery. For example, two days back, 
we hosted the Rohana schools, yes. Kampala Rohana schools, and we had around 160 uh, primary students. Mm. And uh, uh, they're, they're learning hands on, they're yeah. learning skills in urban farming, in agriculture. Yes. They're right from primary. And uh, we have started setting up uh, urban farming technologies mm. in schools. We have started. We have started installing uh, uh, small nurseries. Yeah. Green, green. We call them kadogo <laughs> green houses. <laughs> and uh, we have started installing them in schools. Yeah. Uh, for students, for study purposes. So they are. They are going to start uh, raising their own seedling in schools, mm. such that they can be able to plant uh, vegetables, herbs, and spices in schools, mm. and they can be able to do school gardens. Yes. Yeah. So we, we are doing that. We have started that in Kampala schools, mm -hmm. and I think that will all go all over the country. Also for the market, one, one of our objectives for Change Agricultural Resource Centre, we, wa we, we, we have the objective of bulking and marketing of farm produce. We are looking at setting up cold rooms at the centre, and also to set up um, uh, warehouses. We want our farmers to start delivering products, their farm produce. We sell on their behalf. And we are looking at the export and the local market. That's our target. So we want to help our farmers who have started, let's say, vegetable growing. We, we, when we set up cold looms, we are able to store to the, the perishable products in, in the cold looms such that we can pack uh, and sell to the export market and also to the local market. So it is our target. But for now, we help our farmers to connect them to, superma to markets like Nakasero. We have genuine pe good people in Nakasero market. They, sell, they buy vegetables like kale, they buy vegetables like sweet peppers, they buy vegetables like broccoli. So we connect them to those people whom we know they are good. Well, that's our show for today, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. See you again next weekend. Don't forget to keep the comments coming in. Hashtag NTV Seeds of Gold.